This is a proposal for WebAssembly ES module integration. It's currently being worked on in the WebAssembly community group. This presentation was given in March 2018 to the WebAssembly community group, the Node modules working group, and to TC39. I want to start with the goal of the proposal. Today, there's an imperative JavaScript API for creating module instances. To use a function from the module, you have to set up the request to fetch it and manually set up its imports. Then you have to manually trigger instantiation, at which point you can finally call the function. This proposal adds a declarative API. In particular, it adds the ES module API. With this API, the request for the file, setting up imports, and instantiation all happen implicitly. This should make WebAssembly modules easier to instantiate. But the bigger benefit is that with this, WebAssembly modules will be able to take part in module graphs with JavaScript modules. This will make it easy for web developers to combine functionality from WebAssembly modules and JS modules. So from a user perspective, that's why we want ES module support. From an engine level perspective, what do ES modules do? They provide a lexical environment for the outer scope of the module. The way that this lexical environment is different from function lexical environments is that the boundaries are semi-permeable. With other lexical scopes in JavaScript, such as function scopes, you can't have sibling scopes accessing each other's variables. But with modules, you can say which variables should be accessible by other modules using an export statement, and then other modules can import them. So this provides a link between them. It makes it so that the importing module can access the variable from another scope. ES modules do this in a different way from other module systems. It's different from both CommonJS and from WebAssembly's JS API, which both copy values. Instead, ES modules use live bindings. So both the exporting module environment record and the importing module environment record point to the same memory location. I note this because it has impl implications for how WebAssembly ES modules should work. Before I talk about that, though, I want to do a short walkthrough of how ES modules work for JavaScript. With ES modules, you can import and export things. So we have this whole graph of modules that are exporting values and references and other modules which are importing those values and references. How does this graph get loaded? The work happens in three phases. Construction, instantiation, and evaluation. Now, people talk about ES modules being asynchronous, and you can think of it as such because execution yields to the event loop after each phase. But the phases themselves are not necessarily asynchronous. They can be done synchronously. So let's walk through each step. First, in construction, we need to fetch all the module files and parse them into module records. But these aren't instances yet. We need to have a full understanding of the module graph before we start instantiating anything. We start with an entry point to this graph. For example, the source on the script tag. And we fetch that file. Then we parse it to figure out the next set of files that we need to fetch, which is the requested modules property on the module record. And we continue fetching and parsing until all of the requested modules properties are empty. Half of this work, the loading and the fetching of files, is specified in HTML's spec. The parsing part of the stage is in the ES module spec. While we may need to change some language in the loader spec, we shouldn't need to make any major changes. So at the end of this construction stage, you've downloaded all of the module files and have parsed them into module records. Some implementations such as SpiderMonkey or JSC will also create the module environment record here and wire up the exports to their memory locations. But per the spec, this isn't necessary until the end of the instantiate phase. Some engines also compile the code here. So after construction, we move into instantiation. And two things need to happen here. If it hasn't already been created, the module environment record, record needs to be created here and have exports wired up. And imports need to be wired up to those exports. This happens as a depth first post order traversal. So we get down to the leaf that has no imports and then come back up one level to hook up the imports to the exports from that leaf node. As I mentioned before, these are live bindings. 
the import and export are pointing to the same memory address. In this phase, these memory addresses are filled in with a temporary undefined value, not their final values. We haven't evaluated the code yet, so there are no actual values. The one exception to this is functions, which are initialized at this point. The reason to have live bindings and for instantiation to be separated from evaluation is so that we can handle cyclic dependencies. For example, let's say that you have a cyclic dependency in common JS between A and B. A exports a value, which B imports using something like destructuring. When B imports it, A hasn't yet finished evaluating, so the value is still undefined. Then we'll return to A, which will assign a value to the export. But that value will not show up for B. Because CommonJS handles imports and exports with copying, the import will still have the value undefined. ES modules get around this by doing this linking step. All of the imports are going to be undefined throughout instantiation. At this point, you're just wiring them up to the memory addresses. No values are actually expected yet. The next step is evaluation, which goes through and fills in all of the variable values. It does this by running the top level code. There can also be side effects, like requests sent out to servers. So evaluation is only allowed to run once for each module, and then the instance is cached. The cache holds on to one instance per module per document or worker, at least for JavaScript ES modules. These are cached based on their canonicalized URL. So how would all of this work for WebAssembly? The first phase is pretty easy. That's the loading and the parsing. During this phase, we would let the loader fetch the WASM files. Then when parse module is called on each file, we would logically construct the WebAssembly module to get the list of imports to recursively fetch. Implementations might decide to create the module environment record and handle exports at this point. Then during the instantiate phase, we would logically construct the WebAssembly instance from the module given its dependent imports. After that, during the evaluation phase, we would run the start function. That's equivalent to the top level module code. An engine wouldn't have to actually implement it this way though. It could do a light decoding in the loading phase and just pull out the import section and then do compile and instantiate during the instantiation phase, now that it has all the imports. So that's how we could add ES module support in a pretty straightforward way. What are the problem spots here? One of the problem spots is live bindings. They enable cyclic dependencies, and we want to be able to have cyclic dependencies. To start with, we want to enable cyclic dependencies between JS and WASM. But what does that mean to have a live binding to a JavaScript value from WebAssembly? For example, if you have an export and that export is a numerical value, currently that value is going to be copied when it's imported. For now, live bindings will only work for imports coming from JS into WebAssembly if it's a function. A value won't work because at the time of WebAssembly instantiation, when it reads the live binding, the value is undefined. One thing to note, if a WebAssembly module exports a function, memory, table, or global, those exports can be initialized during the instantiation phase, and they will be available as live bindings to JS. In the future, if we have both mutable WebAssembly globals and an any type that could hold any JS value, then we may be able to have JS live bindings as mutable any typed WASM globals. But we'll need to think carefully about this. Enabling direct WebAssembly to WebAssembly cycles is trickier. There are some pretty nuanced reasons why this is the case, which we're going to have to explore more. So it's unclear what support for WebAssembly to WebAssembly cyclic dependencies there will be. This means we're pretty sure we can support a graph like this with one WebAssembly module in a cycle and in other WebAssembly files in the graph. But we may not be able to support a graph like this where two WebAssembly modules depend on each other. On the topic of cyclic imports, currently the ES module spec disallows cyclic imports for any module which is not a JavaScript module. We have a good idea of what needs to happen here, so we just need to work with TC39 to change that wording in the spec. Those are examples of some of the problems we're going to need to work on for ES module native support. But we also need to support bundlers.
For those who aren't familiar, bundlers are what have been enabling web developers to use modules in the browser before native module support landed. But even though native support is here in the browsers, bundlers are still likely to be used by a lot of projects because they reduce the number of HTTP requests that you have to make. They do this by combining bunches of modules into a single file and adding a little bit of a runtime to load them. They're probably going to continue to rely on the JS API, at least until you can have multi-module files. But they want to emulate the ES module API because that's what their users are authoring, and those users expect it to have the same semantics. With the current JS API that we have for WebAssembly modules, it's difficult for bundlers to emulate ES modules while still using instantiate streaming. This is because instantiate streaming requires that you pass in the fully initialized import object. However, even if you're only importing functions, this is only available after the dependencies instantiate. This means that you have to sequentialize things. One possible way around this is to allow the properties of the imports object to be promises. So those are the kinds of issues that we'll need to figure out as part of this work. So why should we start now? The bundlers are already actively adding support, as is Node, and we need to be in a position to give them guidance. Otherwise, we could end up in a situation where de facto semantics are set in place by the ecosystem outside of this group. So what are the steps to move forward on this? This has been accepted as a phase zero proposal in the WebAssembly community group. We'll be working with that community group to push this through the rest of the phases. We'll also be working with TC39 and the Node Modules Working Group. And we have implementers from the major browsers in Node who are interested in validating this work as we go. If you want to follow this work, you can check out the WebAssembly ESM integration repo on GitHub.